I get a lot of questions about small boats on the big rivers. Uh, a lot of people see me, or they did see me fishing in a 15 foot John boat on the Ohio River. I feel like I'm kind of obligated to make this video. I don't think it's gonna get a ton of views, but that's not why I'm making it. The reason I'm making it is because maybe it'll help somebody make the right decision one day. So I've had people message me and ask me, you know, they'll say, I got a 15 foot John boat or a 14 foot John boat. Do you think I'll be okay out on the Ohio River or this some other big body of water? Um, and I guess they asked me because they've seen me do it. The last thing that I want to happen is for one of you guys to watch one of my YouTube videos and see me out on one of these bigger bodies of water in my little John boat and think to yourself, well, he done it and he's fine, so I can do it and I'll be fine. Well, the truth is I've had some really close calls out there, guys, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. So when I'm thinking about safety in the rivers, there's three things to me that come to mind. That'd be current, that'd be wind, and that'd be barges. The barges, you can keep your distance and normally be okay. But you always want to keep your distance. That way, if you see some big rollers coming or something, you've got time to throw that anchor rope out, get rid of it, and take off and be gone. Don't ever take a chance. If you think you're in danger, get out of there, you know. That's why it's a good idea to tie a buoy or something to the end of your anchor rope. That way, when whatever's happening is over, you can come back and you can still get your anchor rope out, but you can still take off and be safe. Even in my bigger boat now, guys, I always like to keep my distance from those barges because you just never know. The biggest weight that I ever seen come off of a boat in the river was actually from a tug with no barges attached to it. He came by, ply on the water with that big square nose on that tugboat, and he messed the river up for 30 minutes. But if you keep your distance from those barges, you know, that's something you can avoid. Just don't get too brave. Just because you see one barge come by and you say, you know, he didn't make any weight, that doesn't mean the next one when he comes by is not going to make five footers. So the next thing I want to talk about is current. Now current uh, on its own is normally not going to get you in too much trouble. But what can happen is the debris coming down the river is what you got to look out for. If you're anchored up and you know your anchor rope's running at this angle, say you've got a hundred foot log coming down the river in three mile an hour current. So if your anchor's hung down here on the bottom and that tree hits your anchor rope, something's got to give. If your anchor's hung, you know, it's probably not going to break your anchor rope. It's going to pull the front of your boat down in the water. Something else to keep in mind, if, you're, if your boat's floating down the river and say you got a tree right here and your boat gets up against that tree and stops momentum of the boat, the current from hitting the side of the boat so hard can actually pull it underwater. It doesn't really matter how big of a boat we're talking there, even bigger boats. I've seen videos of barges sinking because they got up against something and the current rolled it. So you got that's something else to keep in mind. Some of the best fishing that you can ever experience, especially in the springtime, is below the locks and dams on a river. But at the same time, it's also some of the most dangerous waters on a river. If you don't feel safe, don't do it. There's no fish worth risking your life over. This is normally really turbulent water. There's an undertow at some of these dams that can pull you back towards the dam and get you in trouble. The water can change at any minute. There's normally a siren or a horn or something until blow, but sometimes that doesn't give you enough time, especially if you're anchored. So the best thing to do there, if you've never done it before, go with somebody that knows what they're doing. Go with somebody that has experience below these dams. But what scares me the most, guys, when I'm out on these big rivers is wind, because that's where I've had my close calls. That's where I've got into some trouble. That's the main reason I decided to buy this bigger boat. I had an experience a while back. I was out on the Ohio River. I ran about four or five miles upstream. Everything was good. It was a calm morning. I knew we were going to get some winds later in that day, but I let my guard down and made a bad decision. I ran farther up river than I ever should have. I'm, so I get up to where I'm going to fish, get ready to anchor up, and here comes this north wind up river. Uh, anytime you get wind and current against each other, it causes a mess. And by a mess, I mean big waves. I honestly thought that was it that day. I was scared to death. There was probably two, two and a half, three foot waves. You know, I was out there in a 15 foot boat, so they felt like 10 foot waves to me. I'd never experienced anything quite like that. And it literally scared me to death. And I went and bought a bigger boat. That's how bad it scared me. I needed one anyway. Luckily that day I was by myself. Landon wasn't with me. The water temperature was in the 40s. It was, the air temperature was in the 30s. If I'd have went in that river, 
you know, that'd have probably been the end because there was nobody around me to help me. So here's a good example of just how serious wind and current can be when you mix them together. There was a big catfish tournament in Alabama on the Tennessee River. The boats headed out before sunup to get to their fishing spots. And when they come out of the harbor and got on the river, here's what they were dealt with. So you can see right here just how rough the water was. That's a big body of water, but these were also big boats. I heard everything from seven to 10 foot on the size of the waves. I just can't imagine what those guys went through out there that morning. The water was cold, the temperature was cold. Uh, several boats did sink, as you'll see right here. Luckily, nobody lost their life, but there was a lot of equipment lost. So a friend of mine here on YouTube, Dieter Melhorn, he has a really good YouTube channel, and he actually made a video about this tournament, and he shows exactly what they went through out there that morning. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link to that in the description. Hopefully this video will help somebody make the right decision one day. If you have any tips on boat safety, guys, leave it in the comment section. That way maybe somebody else will see it and it'll help somebody make a good decision one day. If you're thinking about going out and fishing one of these big rivers, guys, remember there's smaller rivers that dump into these ri bigger rivers and they can hold some nice fish. I've caught some of my biggest fish fishing tributaries off the main rivers, mainly because it was too rough for me to fish out there that day. If you get a lot of current, the river's blown out, it pushes those fish up into those tributaries. So if you've got a small boat, that might be a better option for you. That way you can still be safe. You can still be fishing the Ohio River even though you're up in a tributary a mile, you know. You're still catching the same fish, you're just being safe about doing it. Hopefully this helps somebody, guys. Hope you guys have a great day. Remember to be safe out there on the water. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time.